Hi, my name is Jit Sungi from Social Work Department. I'm very happy to share some preliminary finding, you know, because our research is just still ongoing, so I cannot deliver a conformative solution or a suggestion, but I am happy to share, you know, how we in integrate with the, some people from different background, because this research is a multidisciplinary research. So as an example of multidisciplinary research, you know, we maybe go further, you know, how we can enhance, you know, maximize our, you know, collaboration with the other discipline. Okay, and today I have co-present, you know, in this project. So Prof. Tang will, you know, share some issues later, and then I will cover some physical issues first. Uh, Prof. You know, Pauline already explained very well, you know, the growth of aging population in Singapore. So I don't want to repeat. But you know, this project focuses on the context of living a lot. Because I am social worker, right? So although we work together with a different discipline, but you know, you have to ensure your identity. So I am social worker, which means I am more interested in vulnerability. So you know, all the others are definitely, you know, some of all that's very healthy, but still I'm concerned about you know some vulnerable situation and which is living alone in Singapore. And the trend of you know uh, number of older adults are increasing in Singapore, so you know we have to more pay attention to how we can support more you know in the right place if older adults need to live alone. Mm. And a lot of empirical study already well done in this area, and then they identify you know potential high risk in relation to living alone, such as, uh, you know, social isolation, smaller social network, poor health, low life satisfaction, you know, low accessibility to health care, mental health problems, and poor social support, physical injury, even, you know, suicidality. So, you know, actually living alone, you know, it's quite dangerous, you know, in later life. So we have to provide a more appropriate social support uh, through, you know, more, you know, comprehensive social intervention. That's why multidisciplinary research is necessary in gerontological perspective when you study about, you know, uh, especially living alone. Not only just the emotional, psychological, you know, we also consider about financial issue and physical environment issue as well. Mm, there are three important concepts in social care. When you design social care for older adults, actually, you know, pain suggests three important key. Care, what support you want to deliver. Place, where do you want to deliver this kind of care. And the last is a resource. That's a mechanism, you know, to ensure good care at good place. So, you know, recently, you know, aging in place, the concept gave more, you know, significance of the place where older adults can live to enhance their dignity and quality of life. Uh, so we zoom in, you know, more environmental issues in the ecological perspective. And then, you know, the Lawton, you know, explain very well, you know, simplify how we can go through, you know, some empirical research to understand social spatial issue in living alone context. Too. So, you know, uh, Lawton suggests the environment press Person, personal competency and some adaptation process. So environment press is the extent to which uh, social spatial surrounding demands a response from the person. And personal competency is the individual cognitive and physical capacity to meet his or her own needs. So we can measure all the other bio biological health and sensory perception, moral skill, cognitive capacity, and ego strengths as a their personal competency. I can see some of you wear you know, glasses, right? That's you know, one example, adaptation. Because you know, some of you have you know, visual you know, sensory perception is decreased, so you have to wear sunglasses to see better, right? So it's just easy, you know? Personal competency is uh, decreasing you know, over time you know, to most of us. You know? So we have to adjust it to environment press. So that's why you know, older adults need more resource to survive in certain circumstances because their personal competency decreases over time. So we need you know, some special design for older adults to ensure their environment you know, hazard. Uh, actually, this research is very broad scope, but today I just focus on small part of the whole process you know, about research. Actually, you know, the whole research 
has you know, two important objectives. And first, we try to attempt a systematic investigation of uh, biological, psychological, social, and environment needs of old adults you know, who are living as studio apartment. And second, we try to understand you know, these old adults' the attitude, the perception, and actual utilization of uh, assisted device and home modification as an adaptation process. However, today, you know, uh, within short time limit, you know, we just focus on social environment needs of old adults, you know, in the context of a studio apartment in local context. Uh, try to understand, you know, some issues around studio apartment. As you know, if you are Singaporean, you may be familiar with, uh, you know, how the studio apartment has been developed in locally, right? There are some, you know, different stage, development stage. So we have to study about, you know, why sometimes the studio apartment is attractive, or you know, uh, in certain circumstances, why the previous batch were not really successful to attractive to, you know, all others. So we study about you know some social issues around studio apartment through you know all different kinds of you know research material, and then we form multidisciplinary research team consisting of a social worker, me, <laughs> and architecture. You know we also invited a professional elder housing designer from overseas and anthropology. Uh, anthropologist and geriatrician and occupation therapist. So this multi research team, you know, went down, you know, to look around studio apartment inside and outside, and then using some standardized instrument, which is a home assessment tool that we locally modify from the international, you know, widely used instrument, and then we assess the home risk, you know, within, you know, the blocks and, you know, the around the surrounding. And we selected 14, you know, cases, you know, in Singapore in five different districts. Uh, and now, actually, you know, we're collecting some bigger scope of a social survey from 1,000 older adults who are living alone and studio apartment. But still, the data collection is ongoing, so today I cannot share the findings. Uh, again, you know, second stage home visit for 14, you know, studio apartment, we create the, you know, home assessment tool. So I cannot show the, you know, bunch range of the items, you know, to you, but to assess interior, interior area, actually we use five, uh, 56 items for environment behavior, 23 items, and exterior area we use the, you know, 71 items. So most of the, you know, home assessment tools actually has been modified in local context. Uh, in Western country, actually, you know, the home assessment tool is very widely used, you know, to look at, you know, some environment hazard and also behavior problems as well, you know. Mm. So let me just uh, highlight, you know, some findings from our empirical study. Mm. Uh, minister mentioned uni universal design has been applied. We agree. You know, even as studio apartment, we can find some, you know, minimum criteria about, you know, universal design. So basically, the physical criteria were met for accessibility and safety. So. Uh, actually, there is no threshold curve across all area. So if uh, you are using filter, actually you can, you know, um, uh, travel around, you know, anywhere within the uh, studio apartment. And door were enough, you know, large, you know, for disabled people. And cabinet in kitchen also have some, you know, elder friendly feature. So, you know, all the others can cook at their, you know, own kitchen. And window and door systems also were operable. And you know, slip resistance floor and grab, grab bar, you know, were installed in the bathroom. However, you know, functions were met, but we cannot say you know older adults uh, can really you know use uh, this stuff very well because you know think about yourself, you know, although sometimes you are very intelligent and we are very wise person, but you are doing something wrong, you know, without you know some rationale or you know sometimes you do some you know. Uh, mistake, uh, you know, habitual behavior. Because, you know, uh, when you're looking at the studio apartment, it's a really small space, right? And some of all those need to relocate from uh, this place, uh, from, you know, the bigger space. So they are not really, you know, uh, don't, they don't really know how to organize their uh, living in a smaller space. This is new to me, them as well. So a lot of behavior problems we recognize and observe. So first, you know, 
oversized inappropriate furniture. This is really dangerous. Yeah, they brought you know bigger sofa and really high you know bed, so you know falling really you know issues as to their apartment. And also you know, I don't know how small is enough small. You know, still the apartment is small. It, it's really small, but you know, <laughs> sometimes they don't have uh, enough space for storage. So when you are growing older, actually you have to keep a lot of stuff for your good memory, right? So you know, if <laughs> there is no you know enough space, how you can enjoy some you know dignity? Memory is important, you know. Yeah, and uh, also you know, five five. Uh, fire safety measure we couldn't find even at kitchen. That's very dangerous. I know you know the Chinese cooking style. You know <laughs> smoke detector sometimes very sensitive. However, fire safety is very important issue. And sometimes we can see very big fire in HDB. You know on the straight times, right? So we have to ensure that. And electronic appliance, you know, were used in a wrong position. Sometimes electronic socket is too high or too bad, too low, so it doesn't need to, you know, bend too much. They have to spend a lot of effort to, you know, use the electronic appliance. And also, you know, wrong position codes kind of messy electronic code on the floor, which is very dangerous to cause high falling, you know, at home. And you know, all the they don't use night light. Although they needed to go to toilet, you know, at night, but they don't use light. So in a dark day, move. So that's also very dangerous. But that's a behavior problems, right? And uh, still, you know, we can see some, you know, potential wet floor uh, in the laundry area bathroom. Uh, although we applied, you know, some non-slip tiles and bathroom, but if it's wet, if then you know, usually it's actually wet, you know, uh, tile always very slippery. So that's also, you know, how old does it? Uh, are ready to use the, you know, elder friendly, you know, equipment as studio apartment. This is also challenging. And um, mm, actually, when we visit, you know, we notice first that we will visit, right? So maybe you know, some orders they clean up or <laughs> they do, you know, a little, you know, organize their uh, house. However, quite a few, you know, yeah, cases we found very dirty and smelly. Which means the orders are not familiar, you know, to manage their self-care. So sanitation education is also an issue that we observe. And the most big problem is cl cluttering. Mm. Actually, you know, we have very detailed items. You know, I didn't show the st all statistic to you, but uh, this is where we analyze all photos. Okay? Yeah. Mm. You can take a photo, but don't circulate. This is a private you know, house inside, right? So uh, yeah. So there are a lot of cluttering problems. So you know, we have to provide some education how orders organize their living. You know, because this is a very small space, right? So bedroom, storage, laundry, bathroom, you know, living room, you know, all st too many stuff they have kept, and it's very dangerous to cause a lot of accident at home. Uh, as I mentioned, universal design has been applied and elder-friendly feature, especially safe bar were installed as studio apartment. But you know, having safe bar doesn't mean that all those can use and prevent the falling, right? And installation, you know, when we install safe bar, we need to more, you know, uh, build up our skills, you know? Because when you're looking at this toilet, actually this is a safe bar, right? But it's very close to, you know, toilet. So cannot flush it. So, you know, we try to meet regulation. This is a real case, okay? And we saw so many cases, you know? And so, you know, like, you know, in terms of provided, they try to ensure regulation, but they don't have really knowledge how people, you know, can use, you know, safe bar, right? So, user based solution is necessary to develop design and, you know, make a safe environment, okay? And you know, other things the same, you know, this is too far. How the person can use the safe bar, right? <laughs> we don't have that kind of long arm, right? <laughs> yeah. And you know, there are so many issues, but I cannot go detail, right? But that's what we are doing. And you know, in order to analyze this kind of research, you cannot do alone, right? I need some help from the architecture and occupational therapist. And I am social worker, so I try to understand the user or the other's perspective, you know? Yeah. Okay. So for exterior area, you know, let's go through the, you know, some findings that I can highlight. Uh, it is the same, the uh, external, you know, area actually, you know, well designed in terms of the, you know, physical aspects, you know, to meet basic, 
minimum criteria from universal design. So when you're looking at some photos, please enjoy the nice photos. Yeah, okay. Uh, actually, you know, all foot paths were you know widened enough, you know, without steps and free from obstacle. And we saw you know tactile cue were present. So you know, although you know some people have uh, some minor you know impairment or they may be future bound, they can still you know, travel without any serious problems. And also you know the floors are non-slip you know proof surface. So I think this is you know especially uh, apply. You know, especially applied, you know, in terms of weather condition because we have, you know, heavy rain very often, right? So even outside, you know, non-slip tiles are very important to pre prevent some falling outside. And there are, you know, uh, enough, you know, space for wandering and organizing some e uh, event around the studio apartment. Yeah, yeah, there are, you know, <laughs> we don't have enough time, so let me go, you know, very quickly. So outdoor, you know, social space, you know, sitting place, you know, fitness corner, we have very diversity, right? But we have uh, recognized in that, you know, we observe, you know, there is a large variation in using this kind of, you know, space. Space there, but, you know, some space are very well organized, so, you know, people are using, but others, you know, we cannot see any people there, you know. So, you know, there are some mechanisms we need to develop some, you know, activity and gathering outside. Especially, you know, uh, elder-friendly, you know, uh, environment, how you can make it. You think about your older, so you have to spend too much time, you know, outside. You may need to go, you know, toilet, right? But at the ground, we cannot find public toilet. So if you want to do, you know, uh, something, you have to go up and then, you know, you have to use your own, you know, flat. So that's, you know, kind of inconvenience and there is no drinking fountain. And then Singapore is very hot, right? So after you know gathering whatever, you should be thirsty. But you know, in order to drink water, you have to go back, right? So you know how we can make more, you know, like nice place for all the others. So we have to think about that. Okay. So you know, there are some suggestions, you know, I uh, so I just uh, highlight for I don't have enough time, so let me go, you know, just the last example. Yeah, so you know, actually, uh this is the stairs, you know, the normal stairs at studio apartment. Can you pick up any dignity or respect? It's very dry design, right? And even it's not sad, it's, uh, it's not really safe. So we suggest, you know, uh, sensory, you know, stimulation is very important in terms of, you know, elder friendly design. So, you know, yeah, maybe like, you know, we can, you know, insert some nice painting, you know, there so all the others can enjoy, you know, uh, their, you know, brain stimulation when they go up and go down. And definitely, you know, safe, you know, grab should be installed both sides. Most of, you know, place, you know, they have only one side, you know, only consideration for right hand, okay? That's not enough. And also, you know, the at the end, at the end of each step, you know, should be we have to put safe trip. And for the next, you know, slide, you know, Prof. Tang will explain about social concerns around the studio apartment. Well, I'm told that I have a uh, please end. <laughs> so I just, I just really have to zoom through. Um, a lot of people are Singaporeans here, so you know what's happening. Uh, oh, they didn't allow me to continue. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so just, just very quickly, when we talk about studio apartments, um, I want you bring. I want to just bring back about the, the historical development. First, is uh, we did have. Uh, HDB did have a attempt for multi-generational flats in 1987 when you have pilot scheme of studio flats adjoined to four or five room flats. After that, the after 1987 um, scheme, the granny flat scheme, it wasn't very um, successful. We I think HDB built about 400 units of it and the comment was that people were more interested in having larger flats for themselves than um, to have them share the, the smaller the, the studio area was not shared um, by the older people. So the second stage, uh, it moved on to um, the 1991, I, I would call it the granny flat scheme, um, the granny flat scheme that um, was apparently inspired by the Korean National Housing Studio Unit for Low Income. And it was only one block of flat was built in Pasiris in 1991, and it didn't go through um, after that because there was a lack of interest. And uh, the, the studio flats were built downstairs on the first level, and uh, you have to you have you can only get it if you are um, joint purchasing with your children. That's 
staying upstairs. So this studio apartment from 1997 is the one that we are very familiar with uh, that comes with either a studio apartment or with a one bedroom, uh, 45 square meters. They come with elder friendly features that you already know. Um, some of them are standalone, some of them are in mixed blocks now. And I just want to bring to highlight to you that nowadays um, there is a relaunch of what I told you uh, before about the grandparents' flat because you have a dual key units now becoming available, especially in executive flats and as well as um, private uh, condominiums. So um, social issues that are facing residents in studio apartments so far as our survey have seen. Uh, one of it is really the, um, the stigma of living alone. People are still concerned that uh, living alone, as what Pauline say, um, is, is abandonment. So this is a, um, except, um, one quote from a Toyi resident uh, earlier th in this year about having to build, uh, about buildings SA next door. Uh, apartments are like death houses. So this is really uh, quite an uh, issue that, um, of mindsets that we need to change people with. Uh, why is it that we're having more people staying alone, opting to stay alone, and we still have this kind of uh, discriminatory attitude? And second, the financial concern of what if I outlive my savings is something that residents always tell us, um, as well as care concerns, you know, who to call when I'm in time of need, and, and this whole concern with a lack of assisted living uh, to age in place, even in studio apartments. And um, just this is the um, what you can find outside the the lift in the studio apartment, and this is a computer unit in the uh, service centers, senior service center below. But uh, a lot of residents say, oh, this senior activity center, it's only open Monday to Friday. Then what happened? You cannot die on Saturday or Sunday, you know? <laughs> so uh, there's always concern with that. Uh, although there is, uh, you are supposed to rely on mutual help um, when they are not operating. Okay, then just, just the last point, uh, recommendations, which I, um, I think will resonate very well with um, Pauline when she talks about this, has this slides on aging in place, about gracious aging, about enhancing sense of community, about assisted living in place. I think, um, just to recap, uh, there's really a need to counter discrimination. Uh, improved design, um, Song Yi talks about this dignity, um, ensuring dignity, why can't we have nicer wall paintings and things? Uh, HDB, if you want to take a look, take a, take a look at our AS7 uh, building. We have uh, six stories of very nice words to encourage people to use the staircase now <laughs> uh, and paintings. And then um, second is really to improve um, social, social usage. We realize that there's really a lack of um, storage um, in the small unit. Um, maybe there's a need for relocation and settlement service to help people to organize living in small space so you see how you reconcile with having your social memories and, and, and the space constraints. And uh, really to question what's the most appropriate size for small, because some people tell us, oh, we need to stay there. We want to age in place, we want to have a mate, but we don't have a place for the mate to live. Uh, there's no extra uh, space for the mate. And then thirdly, um, uh, we talk about sanitation um, problems. So there's the need for self-care education for living alone. You know, we, we see people leaving their overnight food on the um, in the kitchen and so forth. And lastly, um, all of us have been talking about this. There's a need for provision of continuum care options uh, for assisted living mechanism that people with mild impairment will be able to stay comfortably in aging in place um, for a longer period in um, studio apartments. So sorry for the rush. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.